<clears throat> All right, hey group. So today what we're going to be doing is exploring a couple different types of Punnett squares because up until now we've had dominant recessive um, and one kind of always one over the other. But we're actually going to explore a couple different other possibilities because they do exist in the world, though not nearly as often as the other types of Punnett squares that we've been studying. And what they're called is incomplete dominance, and they're also called 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 codominance. And we're going to actually explore blood type because that's a very common example of codominance. So let's jump into it. So incomplete dominance, I think you'll see, is not that tough. So it's the idea that a red flower and a white flower actually do blend together and make a pink flower. So what you should notice immediately about the genotypes is there's no little letters. So it used to be big B and little b, um, or something like that. And now there's just capital letters, and there's actually different letters, which is new as well. So if they're both R, it's red, both W, it's white, and then they're somehow, both of them, we get pink. So let's make a little Punnett square so you can see how it works. So let's just say that we'll have mom up here. That's a red flower, mate with a white flower. And then the probability would still be exactly the same. You'd have a red and a white, and then a red and a white. And all four of them would actually be red and a white. And which would mean that it's 100% pink flowers. So that's what that would end up being. So let's go back for a second. Let's do another one. So let's just say we had a pink flower and a pink flower. Oops. And a pink flower. So if we had a, a pink flower and a pink flower, RW, RW, and they had a Punnett square, it would be, this one would be RW. This one here would be WW. W. This one down here would be RW, because it's still the same exact rules of Punnett squares, and this would be RR. So what that means is if you mix two pink flowers together, 25% of them would be red, 25 and 25, so 50% of them would still be pink, and 25% it would be white. So this is another main difference, is that you have three now different possibilities in a Punnett square. So that is incomplete dominance in a nutshell. In codominance, you're going to see is pretty much the same thing. The only difference here is instead of a red flower and a white flower coming together to blend together, codominance, essentially they coexist, you get a red and white flower. So both traits are exhibited as opposed to blending together. But how you do it is still exactly the same as you would with incomplete dominance. So we'll do one just to make sure you get it, but let's just say we mix a red flower together with a red and white flower, so that'd be RW. And then we go through Punnett square, and we'd have 25% would be red, another 25% would be red, and then RW. You'd have 25% here would be red and white, and another 25% would be red and white. So it would make 50% that are red, 50% that are red and white. And there's other examples we can do, but I think you would get the point. So that's incomplete and codominance right there. Incomplete, they blend together. Codominance, they're both shown. Otherwise, the rules are pretty similar. So now let's talk about blood type. Blood type is an example of codominance and regular Mendelian dominance. Um, so first, we need to look over here. So we could write genotypes of codominance like this, big A, big A, or big AO, kind of like we were doing with a bunch of capital letters. But I want you to at least notice this little column right here, because sometimes you see codominance written like this, where you pick a letter, they picked I, and they're all I's. And then on top here, an I with A would mean that it's you know, the, the A um, blood type, and then I, I with a B would be B, and then, you know, so on and so forth. So, and I with nothing is just O. So you'll see it sometimes written like this. Usually, though, we end up kind of writing it just like this. Okay, so first, you need a little quick little mini lesson on blood types. There's four types. You could be A, B, A, B, or O. O would mean that you essentially have O, O as a genotype. A, B, same thing. You have A, B as a genotype. But if you look here at A and B, if you're A, you can be AA or AO, and the reason for that is A is dominant over O, and B is dominant over O, but A and B are co-dominant, so they share, no one wins, that's why they have their own separate blood type. So, I know this could be a little bit confusing, so let's do a couple examples and hopefully you can get the idea. So let's say that we had, actually I have one already made for us, 
let's say we have a blood type here. So this one is AO and BO. So the first thing to make sure you know is that if you're AO, it means your blood type A, because A is dominant over O. If you're BO, it means your blood type is B. All right, so let's make a final square. So we have A, O, so you split up just like normal. We have B, O. So someone with blood type AO marries and has a kid with somebody blood type BO. So then this Punnett square, you'd have AB. And this side over here, you'd have BO. And down here, you'd have OO. And then down here at the bottom, we have AO. So what this tells us is that if AO had a kid with someone with BO, 25% of their kids would be blood type AB. Because if you're A and B, your blood type would be. 25% would be BO, which means your blood type B, because B is dominant over O. 25% would be OO, which means your blood type O. And 25% would be AO, so blood type A. So you have a quarter of all four different blood types if you end up having an AO and a BO. All right, let's just do one more. Let's say you're BO and AA. So mom is BO and dad is AA. If you want to try this on your own, by all means, otherwise you can continue watching. So at least 25% here would be AB, and down here another 25% of their kids would be AB, even though neither of them have AB. And then 25% here would be AO, and another 25% would be AO. So remember, AO means blood type A, blood type A. So AA is A, and so is AO. They're both A. All right, so that is pretty much blood type as well. Um, we'll definitely do some practice to make sure that you get it. I know those are all really short and sweet, so um, as always, if you have any questions, please let me help you and clarify whatever you don't understand. Hope you enjoyed Incomplete, Codominance, and Blood Type.